Like many in white America are growing up, or excuse me, waking up out of their 400 year slumber. And you know, we don't control the times and the seasons, that's up to God. But what does he say in the book of Ecclesiastes? There's a time for everything under the sun. And I believe in my heart, and I know my, my sisters and my brothers believe in their hearts, that God said the time is now. The time is now, and it is enough. And he's doing a mighty work, but he works through each and every one of us. And he's tugging on hearts, and he is revealing the blind spots, the hidden spots, the, the, those spots that man has not seen in their hearts. And this is, this is the season of the great reveal. This is the season of the great reveal. And those, those issues, those dark spots in, in, in hardened hearts are being revealed. And it is my cry and my prayer, as I know it is yours, that each and every one of us, as Tashira was just saying, we can just lay it down before the Father. Say, dear God, be there any wicked way in my heart? Show it to me, oh God. Deal with it. Deal with me, Father. Heal me. Fill that, that dark, blind spot with your goodness, with your love, with your mercy, with your grace. Amen. And I believe that there is a mighty healing that is coming to this nation, and it has already started. And trust me, it started that day, that evening, right over there on 38th in Chicago, because God is in this. He did not do this, but he allowed it. And he's doing a mighty work. Whoever is willing, give me a show of hands. Who is willing to say, Lord, take me, use me. Do anything you want with me, oh God. Do anything you want. Use me, oh God. Anoint me, oh God. Take my feet where you want me to walk. Have me touch what I need to touch. Use my mouth. Give me your words, oh God. Anoint my words to be words that are seasoned with salt. Words that are words of grace. You know, the Bible says that the most unruly part of the tongue, excuse me, of the body is the tongue. And it can be used for either a curse or a blessing. Who wants to use words that, that, are, that are used to, uh, to bless? speak words that are used to bless amen and we're called to be a blessing we're called many of us to step out of our comfort zones and to do something new but who knows that god is doing a new work this is a new day and he's moving in a new way and this is a new season this is a season that nobody here in our country has ever seen i was talking with another friend a couple months ago and, and i was sharing some things with her some of the stories ladies that we've talked about and she said, this is, this is just horrific. This is awful. She started crying and she said, I can't believe this. This is so un-American. And it struck me and I said, you know, this is the American way, actually. This is the American way because that is exactly what our nation was established on from the jump. It is the American way. But who here wants to be part of turning it around and starting a new way in America? founded on love and goodness and grace and mercy and kindness and all the fruits of the spirit extended toward man regardless of of of, of gender of race of socioeconomic class just from human to human amen let's start a new american way and i believe that god is doing this work and it started that evening right here as george cried out to his mama there's a new work that's being done and God is in charge. He's doing it and he's moving through each and every one of you. And he's doing a great work through these ladies who spend the, their time to come. They tour the city, you guys. They speak from event to event to event all week long, week after week, month after month, and some year after year have, they have been suffering. But they're not alone. We're all here with them, amen? Amen. And we are getting the attention of uh, those who are in government, uh, our, our leaders. We have um, uh, systemic racism in our country, the judicial system, the law enforcement system, the health care system, the education system, the prison system. Yep. Don't get me started about the church. All of these areas have been a problem in our government system, have all been a problem. But there is a turning around that's coming into place. There's a turning around. 
And I'm so grateful that you're all here. And God's going to be giving each and every one of you ideas of how you too can be a part of this and making a difference. I'd like to ask my sister, um, Ashley Quinones, to please come up. She's going to share uh, a little bit of her testimony with us. She um, is a... Um, she has such a heart for people, you guys. And her words are powerful. She's careful with the words that she chooses to speak. She's going to share um, great insight for you to hear today. And I want you to be encouraged and be strengthened by what Ashley shares with us. Ashley Quinones, everybody. I love Sonia. <laughs> um, so um, my name is Ashley Quinones. I'm the wife of Brian Quinones, who was murdered uh, 11 months ago in Richfield, Minnesota, September 7th of 2019. Um, I am his wife, and I'm the mother of his only child, um, who is 13 years old. And um, basically, I always try to drill in the point that it doesn't really matter um, what you've done in this life or all the good things that you have done, they don't see that when they see you um, and your color when you're interacting with law enforcement. And um, I've really worked hard. Um, me and Tashira have worked super hard on um, separating um, supports for families and then also trying to get the, the community involved and how they can better help and assist us. And that's why she's in families, supporting families against police violence, which I don't know if you said that. Um, family supporting families against police violence, if you can follow them. Um, and then I have Justice Squad. And um, we basically plan and help all these things around the families and try to get the support of community. And also um, knowing how to support us is key. Um, my husband's uh, one year anniversary will be September 7th. We're having an event in Richfield where he was murdered. And um, if you can pay attention to the dates of the people that are murdered, they are having their vigils or um, anniversaries, which we call them angel anniversaries that are coming up. And a lot of them are coming up pretty quick, quickly here. Uh, Justin's is also uh, this week, right? Yep. And so, um, so was Miss uh, Har Delshia Hardell Sherell. So we really need support um, on those days in particular. Um, I would say this month on the seventh was my husband was murdered on the seventh, and this month on the seventh it was a lot harder than a few of the other months that I've had because I'm coming closer to the actual year mark. Um, and I didn't really pay attention to how much it does matter, but it really does matter that people are paying attention and, and want to hear these stories and don't just hashtag them on your sign and don't know their story and know the true story. And that's how I feel because I, ha I don't tell my husband's story because if you challenge yourselves to go out and read these stories and then see the corruption and the lies for yourself, I shouldn't have to do much explaining. I shouldn't have to tell you why he deserved to be here when it's in black and white and it's all over the place for people to see. And that's the, the part that I feel like the community is missing. They're ta at the end of the day, even a lot of activists are still able to say what they think happened they don't know what happened because a lot of them aren't talking to the families. Um, and there, therefore, you got to think the police are the ones that are spreading that one side of the story. So if George Floyd's story didn't get recorded, if his incident didn't get recorded, and you didn't see that they lied, you wouldn't be here understanding what we've been telling our truths are for 20 years. And my point is, now you have to do your own work and challenge yourselves to get to know these people. These are actually human beings. They actually were in society playing key roles in lives. And it's, disrupt it's disrupted my whole entire family. Um, my grandparents, I'm, ha I'm mixed. So I'm black, white, and native. And my grandparents are white. And we, I've been trying to explain to them what has been happening for years, ever since I could understand racism as a kid. And I had to tell them this past weekend that you guys had, you know, they raised me and I told them, you guys failed to prepare me for the world as a black woman. That's what the failure was. And how can I 
become part of the change for people to understand the correct education that goes into preparing people of color for the life that we actually have to live because people like me if we have if we're raised by primarily white parents they don't prepare us for this i wasn't prepared to watch my husband be shot i wasn't prepared for all the racism in school i wasn't prepared for the life that i actually have to live and so that's where my focus is coming in and also placing blame where blame is due, where blame is due on every person that's out here, including myself. Because had Philando Castile mattered enough to us, there wouldn't have been a Brian Quinones. Had Brian Quinones mattered enough, there wouldn't have been a George Floyd. This could have been stopped. And we all have to accept responsibility that we haven't done our part we haven't challenged ourselves to get to the bottom of things. People didn't challenge themselves to figure out who Mike Freeman was until Re Recall Mike Freeman came about. We, we need to know who these people in power are. We need to know what's actually going on, the laws that are protecting them, that are actually formulated to work against us. It's very strategic, but it's not unaccomplishable we can actually do it if you pay attention and do the research and that's what's what drives me is because i feel like if people would have cared enough that my my family could have been spared and so i'm here because we weren't doing that work that right work doing the the work to actually challenge the system that we could have been doing for years that we haven't been doing so um I'm all about action. I don't I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm I'm all for it. I'm 150% for the change and I'm 150% willing to do whatever by any means necessary to get the change that needs to happen because I'm going to work on sparing somebody else's family. I'm going to make sure that I make sure that they never have to work and live how I have to live. I'm going to make sure that their kids have a father and their mother is 100% happy because she has her husband. I'm not gonna be a part of the problem anymore. And so I just really want people to challenge themselves to never put yourself above what can happen. You're, you're just as susceptible, it doesn't matter what color you are because this corruption is a lot deeper than skin tone right now. And we have so many issues where we have slave mentality even in our own community. And that's also something that needs to be talked about. We shouldn't have colorism in our own community. We shouldn't be divisive in our own communities. So um, I, I wanna push that apart and, and thank you for being here today, but challenge yourselves beyond this to see what we're talking about. Read these cases and see, you can watch the video and read the police report and see the lies for yourself. So do that work and then you can start to see what you're actually up against because it's a lot greater than what I think people actually think it is. So once again, um, I'm Ashley Quinones. I run Justice Squad and that's exactly what I'm all about is um, being the change in the community that we need to see. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.